Hey everybody and welcome to or welcome back to another episode of the Witchin and Mama podcast. I am Nicole. You can find me on Instagram as witchin underscore knitten underscore mama or on Ravelry as C Turtle Girl G R R L not G I R L. Um, so I missed you guys last month. We didn't do an April roundup because we were in the midst of moving and luckily things have settled down. We are in the new house full time and as of today, May 25th, our old house is on the market. So super excited about that. Um, a little, a little sad. It's a part of our life that's that chapter is over. So we're just we're hanging in it. But um, this one may run a little long because we didn't do an April roundup. Um, so sit tight. Hopefully you stick with us. And I'm gonna apologize in advance if we've got any ambient noises. I've got construction going on somewhere in the neighborhood behind me. We've got trees, we've got bugs. Radar is sunning himself on the porch further up, so he may come and visit us later too. But like I said, we've got a lot to do and um, a lot to talk about. So let's jump right in. Um, skeins in, skeins out. I did not take account from April because things were just crazy. I know I sold several on Ravelry, at least five. At least five full skeins on Ravelry over the last two months. So that that was good. Um, skeins in. How do we how do we want to do this with skeins in? Um, because a lot of them were incorporated into whips. So let's just let's just do the thing and uh, get our get our acquisitions together. Alright, so we're back. And we have our acquisitions. I actually had some really fun acquisitions over the past couple months. And um, get right into those. So this is a skein of table fur from Knit Picks. Um, this is the color Lapin. I picked this up at Goodwill for two bucks. I have no idea what I'm going to make with this. Um, either a super fluffy stuffy or I was talking to a friend of mine and I said I could go super extra with this and put this on the collar of a cardigan and have like a furry cardigan. So um, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, that's that's going to be fun if and when I get to that, but yeah, total impulse, saw it. I was like, yep, I'm picking that up. I've been wanting to get some fun fur, um, table fur from Knit Picks for a while, but just never pulled the trigger because I didn't have a pattern in mind. So that was the first one. Second one was I got six skeins of DK Sparkle uh, from Lion Brain Yarn in the color Night Sky. This was going to be a look at my holes by James Watts, um, which I ended up frogging because I was not happy with how the pattern was turning out, how my garment was turning out. Um, I am going to try again. He did come out with a version 2.0. So I'm going to use, continue to use this. It's a beautiful cotton. Um, the sparkle in it is, is pretty soft. You can't really, it catches on some of my, my dry skin on my hands, but otherwise it's a pretty nice yarn to work with for, you know, big box brand. And this was at uh, Joey's exclusive, I believe. So got that one. And the same day that I got the DK Sparkle, I picked up some DIY Glow. I have no idea what I'm going to do with this, but I have been wanting to get some because it looks like fun and um, honestly, the crazy thing is this glows like crazy. I had it in the plastic bag, walked from the store to my car, got in my car and it was glowing in my car just from the sun exposure between the store and my car. So. Um, ghosty, maybe some embellishments on something. I think this might be cool in um, maybe a color work yoke of some sort, like a Halloween color work. Uh, actually, this would be, this is considered a medium. This might be kind of cool in Andy Satterlund's Arachne sweater as the spider web. That would be neat. So, got two of those. I have those in my stash. Um, Nitty Tina was nice enough to send me a gift of some kin yarn. He is going out of business. He's no longer selling yarn, dyeing yarn. I got two on his Aurora fingering base of Onyx. 
this will be a t-shirt at some point um, and then I got one on his DK base Stratus DK uh, called bitter this guy is going to be a ghost. Um, I really want a spring ghost that has the color of daffodils, so I think that's what we do this one with the yellow orange eyes. I've got to talk to Danielle at Suncatcher and see if she can help me out find some pretty spring eyes for this guy. So those were from Kim Yarn. And then I got two states from the lovely Phoenix at Crafted by Fates. So she sent me this one, it's Wyoming, and this one is our second Vermont. So we have those two to add to the state's box. And that leads us into the state's one here. So I was able to do one whole square in two months because things were just crazy. I actually lost my bag that had my blanket in it for about four weeks. So I wasn't able to work on it as, as much as I would have liked to. Um, so the only one I did was Indiana. And this was given to me from Laura Bell's. It is a Plank and Stella colorway. And it was a scrap that she had left over. So that was the only one, but Indiana brought us up to 10, 10 state squares. So we've been tracking that progress on Instagram. We're gonna keep working on it. Um, I don't know how much I'm gonna work on it this summer. I still would like to, to keep working on it. It's my car net for now too. It hasn't gotten too terribly cumbersome to carry around and work on it. So I'm just gonna keep, keep doing it. Um, our next color on this one is going to come from Maryland. This is from Rising Tide Fiber Co. Lovely Melissa, I believe, is her name. And so I figured it's time for some pink. Some pops of pink in here. So that'll be our next square. And then we can mark off number 11. I can't believe we're a fifth of the way done with this project. It seems like it's still so far, far away. But it's okay. We keep working on it. So that kind of brings us into whips. And we have a lot of whips going on because, like I said, I haven't had a lot of time to work on very much. Um, so, and I haven't, the only things I've started, I ended up frogging because I didn't, I didn't like it and that was the look at my holes. But uh, let's start with the Campside Cardi, which I am not going to publicly advertise for this designer anymore. Um, there are aspects of this pattern that I don't appreciate or approve of. Uh, if I had known that they were a part of this pattern, I would not have purchased it. So I'm not going to continue to repeat the name of the cardigan or the designer. Um, I'm not using hashtags for that cardigan or the designer. Um, if you know who it is, you're more than welcome to talk about it in your own time. I'm not going to do it here. So, I picked up the stitches for the collar and I did the collar. However, when I finished the collar, I realized I had not picked up enough stitches. So we have this lovely pull happening over here. and. Sammy at Big Knit Energy helped me figure out what was going on. Um, so I'm going to have to rip this out completely and redo it, which I'm fine with. I would rather it be right than be upset with myself um, later on. I'm also going to change the bind off because I did the regular bind off and I think it needs a stretchy bind off. So I did that part and then I got to Sleeve Island. And so we're working the decreases now. You can kind of see them come over here. And the sleeve. And so this one's about mm, half done on sleeve one. So I'm really, really happy with the progress. I did finish my first skein of Yowza, uh, which is 200 grams. I don't know. It's, you know, one of those Babs huge, huge, big, big boy skeins. So um, that was another, I'd consider that another skein out. Uh, working on the second one now. And then I have a smaller Yowza mini that uh just in case so here we are with the campsite party i'm still pretty happy with the progress um i'm just not really wanting to talk about it publicly because it, it bothers me so um i don't post on instagram about it very much anymore so that's one whip let's get that all back in there over here? Yeah. Alright, what was this one? This 
was, yeah, this was look at my holes. This is all there is to show of it. I round it back up. So I'm not, I'll start again eventually. Um, I want to get something else off the needles first. That's my big goal is to finish up another project. Um, let's do the ripple camisole. And these are my new bags. I have several of these bags now um, from Handmade by Heather, I think is her name. Um, I am particularly fond of the over the arm because it has the over top and I can knit and it stands up so I don't have to worry about my yarn falling out. So this is got about seven inches. Look at that pooling. Oh, I love it. Look at that pooling. This is uh, the Ripple Camisole by Jessie Made Design. And this is April Showers by Lisa over at Cozy Cauldron Fiber Co. Love it. This is, this is bringing me so much joy. Um, this is my goth pride camisole. <laughs> I'm hoping to have done by June 10th so that I can wear it to a birthday party. So I'm super happy with how that is uh, looking up. Still got about, I don't know, maybe two thirds of the skein left. So I don't know if we're gonna be able to make it a whole skein of this or if I'm gonna end up busting into the second skein. But this is priority number one right now. Super excited. I did try it on for the first time the other day. And um, one thing that I'm glad that she put in the pattern is she talks about the horizontal stretch. So it looks long when you're knitting it, but when you put it on that stretch goes horizontally. And um, I think a lot of people who made this don't account for that horizontal stretch. And so they just knit the whole thing up to where she says it should be and then they don't try it on as they go so I am making an effort to try it on as I go um, I want to make sure that it fits and I want to make sure it fits properly so that's where we are with that one and then our next whip is the new jelly roll blanket if you recall a couple episodes ago we talked about excuse me the 10 stitch twist blanket that I had started to use up some of my DK scraps and I did not like how that was turning out so I ripped it out. Um, the joins on it were weird. I had watched a couple YouTube videos and I just I couldn't get it to look like I wanted it to and what I had envisioned in my head and I was doing what I had seen on YouTube but it still didn't look right so not really 100% sure what was going on there but I switched to the jelly roll after talking to Amber and Andy Marie Nitz. She is working on one too. So my modifications were I'm using DK and fingering health double. I'm using my DK scraps up. Um, and I am doing it on size nines. So it is very thick fabric. It's super squishy. I love it. This is what was left over from the Rhode Island Square. Um, new Tina, I think, gave that one to me. Um, I held this one double to see how I like the fabric and it is nice. It is lovely and very squishy. So I will be using the balance of the States Blanket yarn in this. Um, I did one, two, three, three DKs that I used up. So I considered those three stash out because they were part of the Ravelry stash that I had. And then the one mini out. So I'm hoping that was four altogether. So yay, that's that's some movement and good movement in my in my book. And I have several other balls that I'm gonna add to this. I keep finding random skeins of DK in my stash. This is Witch's Cauldron by Bumblebee Acres. I made the Bon Bon Bunny from Susan Claudino out of it. And so I'm gonna put that one on there. This was January 2020, Sugar Plum Circus, Unicorn Club. Uh, this was another Sugar Plum Circus Club. This was Yarnaceous Fiber from March 2022, Mystery Color. Uh, a random one that I found and then I'm not sure what else is in here. I've got the, the rest of my Alice DK from Wonderland Fibers in there, and that will go in there too. So I'm just finding lots of DK stuff to put together, and this has been a lot of fun. Um, like I said, I'm having a lot of fun putting this blanket together. 
and uh, the jelly roll is definitely a nice alternative to the 10 stitch because I really don't have to think about what I'm doing. It's perfect for hockey playoff season. So that's when I've been predominantly working on it is, is hockey, watching ho um, playoffs. So yeah, those are my whips for now. Um, finished objects. Let's see what we are. I only had one finished object in the past two months and that's just because knitting time was limited. I've got two other big projects going on and chaos moving and I got sick in there too so yeah it's fun. So this little guy is my only finished object and this is Grim Grinning Ghost by Susan Claudina and he is in Bumblebee Acrooks Farm Lucky Charm colorway. And these are Suncatcher Craft Eyes. This is the Coral Speckle. You can kind of see the speckle in there. I think the coral went perfect with this colorway. It looks absolutely fantastic. But this was our Easter baby. And I have not worked on it anymore since then. And I need to because I'm starting to feel depressed. So, um, one finished object is still a finished object. No matter how big or small it is. He sits on the ancestor altar that we put together in our living room, and uh, I'll keep changing them out seasonally as I finish them. But yay for another ghost! And I um I love it when you guys send me DMs of people who are making ghosts. Like it just brings me so much joy. So if you are making ghosts or you see somebody who's making a grim grinning ghost, feel free to send it to me. I love it. I'll repost it to my stories. I just I get a kick out of them. They're so cute. So. There's our one finished object. And I am actually going to keep the balance of this DK weight yarn. Um, it's it's gorgeous the way it's striped up. Absolutely gorgeous. Um, I think it would look fantastic with a darker, like a navy blue held with it on like a shirt or something. So, there's a critter down there. Um, so, yeah. That's going to be next. All right, and that was our only finished object. Let me flip the page on my notes. And we have a new segment called Brewing in the Cauldron. And so I'm going on brand with the whole witchy knitting mama. This is gonna be super cheesy, y'all, so I'm sorry in advance if it's so cheesy it hurts. But I found my old and so this is where I'm going to start keeping new ideas, design, um, design patterns, uh, new to me dyers that I would like to get no more attention on, notion makers, um, that kind of thing that I'm, I'm focused on this and this is what's currently in my mind. So let my mind be the cauldron. But uh, the first thing that I was brewing in the cauldron for the past two months is uh, Crafted by the Fates Dyers. She is a fairly new dyer on the scene. Um, her last collection was the Courage the Cowardly Dog collection, which was fantastic. Like, talk about your 90s kid nostalgia. It was great. All of the colors that she came up with were absolutely fantastic, absolutely on point. Uh, and I think she had a very successful launch with that with that colorway collection. So after her Courage collection, she did this, um, a set different sets of minis. And I picked up her what was this one called? I think this was Gothic Garden. Yeah, pretty sure that's what it is, it's Gothic Garden. But five little minis. Super happy. I love those colors. Um, I think what I'm gonna do is one of the designers that I'm currently brewing on, she has a top that has like a ruffle that goes around, and I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna strike these into the ruffle, and then I'm gonna see if I can find a primary, like a Cascade Heritage or something that's similar in one of these colors. If not, just ask Phoenix to dye me up one uh, and make the body of the shirt that solid color. So I think that will be a lot of fun to use those with, alternative to using like, you know, a shawl or a scarf or cowl. So that was my first purchase from Craft by the Fates. Like I said, I'm super happy. And Phoenix was nice enough to include this gorgeous set of Halloween minis. These are so pretty. They're definitely that autumnal feel. Not vibing with the 80 degree weather in North Carolina right now. So 
I am so appreciative of this. It definitely kicks off my spooky ween in a, in a positive light. Um, I do believe I am going to take my Halloween countdowns for this year and turn them into the Jelly Roll Blanket. Um, I like kind of having all of my countdowns together, but I'm not a big fan of like the massive wraps that are out there for Advent knitting. So I kind of like the idea of putting all my Halloween minis in one. I think that's what I'm going to do is put them in my jelly roll. Uh, so yeah, that brings us to, let's talk about notions. Let's talk about notions. Uh, let's see. I got this I'm gonna hope I don't drop this super cute rainbow set of lightsaber stitch markers from DK Graham over May the 4th uh, I also got a couple of stickers from her shop but I love these lightsabers <laughs> they're so cute um, they're lightweight and I'm looking forward to using them on future projects so that she's a new to me notions maker um she does stickers she does I think she does laser cutting like wood. So she has stitch markers and sorry for the car noise. Um, she does yarn cutters and a lot of like themed sets that she has together that are super awesome. Um, she's incredibly talented, so definitely check her out if you get a chance. So there's one of her. And then Lynn, these are so cool, you guys. I have let this notions maker brew in my head because I wanted to see how this would translate into my vlog world but um I got these babies from the naughty nitrous who is Andy and these are yarn bowls as you can see by this little guy so this one holds about well, it holds a little bit smaller than a hundred hundred gram cake but um you thread the yarn through the eye hole here and I am obsessed with these guys right now. This one glows in the dark, it glows orange. So this one has scared the shit out of me in the middle of the night. And then when I ordered this one, um, Andy sent me this my little baby and I am so happy with him. I have no idea why a teeny tiny skull brings me so much joy, but it does. Holds a 20 gram ball. So I have not tried to get a cake in there, but this one just lives on my desk because it makes me smile. Andy has larger versions of these guys. She does have some that are like huge that hold bigger cakes. Um, she also has several, several different colors. Um, she makes these on her 3D printer at home. So she has red and black and she has a rainbow gradient and she's got uh, purples and blues and greens. And I think she said when I talked to her last that she was actually ordering some new filament for her 3D printer. So I'm not sure what new color she's going to have. She also has cauldron yarn balls that are more rounded with a lip and they have a little you know, three-legged base that sits, sits flat. So um, Amber got one of those Amy Marie knits and um, I thought that was super cute. And I'm not sure what else Amy's gonna come out with as far as like yarn balls because these are fantastic. I love alternative designs for common used items like yarn balls. These are different, these are cool. So check out Andy. She has got her husband dyes yarn to um, Hearing Colors Dye Works. So check them out on YouTube. Check them out on Instagram. Uh, check out his Etsy page or their website. I think they have a website now. And uh, give her a follow because these are so fun. So fun. And I'm thinking about doing a summer make along where one of these would be a prize. Maybe like one of the big ones would be a giveaway prize. That'd be a lot of fun. So let me know what you think down below. All right. What else is brewing in my cauldron design wise? I cannot get enough of summer tops right now. I am on Ravelry constantly looking for tops, looking at updated updates, looking at new designs. And I love t-shirts. I would love to start replacing some of my graphic t-shirts like this one. This one, maybe not so much, but some of my graphic t-shirts that are old and been around for a while with knitted garments. And so I was looking at um, Little Wolf Knits on Instagram. Her name is uh, Rihanna and she has a lot of very fun summery tops. And I was particularly looking at the Seabreeze top 
the Bay Breeze top and the East Coast top. So she, they're fun. They have ruffles. They have ruffles on you know the sides. And I am leaning towards taking popular pattern ideas, like pattern designs, and making them alternative, and making them gothy, making them me. Because I am different. I am not in the same mold as every other person that knits her patterns. So I thought it would be fun to see what it looked like. Um, I also looked at the Sunset Sunshine Tank Top by Jennifer Owens Designs. Um, I have a skein of Hobie, don't ask me what kind it is. I should have grabbed it and I didn't. Um, it's a gradient that goes from purple to orange to green. And I needed something that would be pretty seamless so I didn't have to do sleeves. Uh, and that's the one that I, I was looking at for this particular gradient yarn. And I think that's that's the one I'm, I'm gonna go towards. Um, I did have to, I talked to a designer friend of mine, Alex, if you're watching, hello. Um, and I asked her for some help on that one because I was like, I don't want sleeves because I don't want to have to break the yarn. And so she and I and Phoenix talked about different ways to, to you know, do the sleeves and to do straps without having to break the yarn multiple times to make sure the gradient doesn't get broken up. So I'm super, super happy about that and super grateful for Alex's help for helping me find um, a top that I really like. And then the last one that I saw that I really liked was the Spring Breeze by Carmen Ties, T-Y-E-S. <laughs> so it's another shirt, a uh, short sleeve shirt with eyelets around it. And I don't know what it is with me and eyelets right now. I get along with them. They're great. They allow air to pass through on very hot summer days. <laughs> but it's another one that I think I'm gonna try and look at for some Halloween yarn that I have. Um, another one was the Rocket Tee. I'm gonna look at that one too. I think that one is Tannis. I'm not sure. Somebody comment below and let me know. Um, but I have some fun Halloween yarn that I think I want to stripe and get some like plain black mohair to go with it and do the the striping. I think that would be a lot of fun. But um, that brings us into Summerween. Uh, Summerween is in full swing right now. We are having a blast. I have so many ideas and projects up in this noggin that are brewing around in my cauldron and I'm just like when do I find time to do this stuff I don't and that's part of the problem so like I mentioned I've been looking at spooky tops for summerween um I think that's probably something that's going to happen more next year since I'm going to have a little bit more time and I think I'm just going to make like a list in my queue or make like a wish list <clears throat> excuse me of designs and what yarn I kind of want to pair with them and not necessarily do a make nine because this year's make nine is already out the window um but I think that will at least keep me on track and keep my mind where I'm able to see this pattern with this yarn this is what it's you know designated for um so that's one one direction I'm definitely looking at for spooky tops uh let's see what else is on my list Spooky matchy cottage hair accessories. <laughs> this is a new pattern by Will and Pine. It's uh, I think four different hair accessories. There are two different types of like ribbons, a scrunchie, and then like a hair bow. It's like shaped like a bow. And um, I'm gonna bust some scraps out and see if I can find some matchy matchy yarn like with the April showers. Where'd it go? There it is. With the April showers, I know I'm gonna have leftovers. This would make a gorgeous ribbon, in my opinion. And I think that if I have the time to do that before the birthday party, um, I'm gonna do either a ribbon or a scrunchie to match that top. And that'll be fun. Um, accessory projects are always quick and easy and instant gratification. And they're things that I will use regularly. So I'm looking forward to that too. Making uh, spooky, spooky accessories, cause they're hard to find. Spooky hair accessories are difficult to find. Um, and then the last thing I'm working on is paintings. And so if you've been here a while, you saw my popsicle painting, my popsicle DIY painting that I did when I took a sign from the Dollar Tree and I turned it into a summer wing sign for our front door. So let me show you what we got yesterday. Move my 
Mr. Coasty. So this stuff over here too. So I got a Good Vibes Pineapple. For this one, I'm going to take off this glitter, which is now all over my hand. Take off the glitter, um, and then I'm going to keep the shape the way it is. I'm going to get some black. I'm probably going to do a black wash over it. The top will probably remain the same. And then I'm going to get a yellow. And what I'll do is I'll continue the crisscrossing sections in the pineapple to keep the, the look of the pineapple. And then I will do a jack-o'-lantern face on the pineapple to do another spooky ween. Um, I'm pretty excited about this one too. Uh, this is a design, this, the spooky pineapple jack-o'-lantern or the pineapple lantern. Um, has been stuck in, in the cauldron for a while now and I've been looking at like earrings on Etsy and different t-shirts or designs that have the pineapple lantern on it. So um, that's one thing I'm definitely going to do and I hope I get that done toward the end of summer. And then the second one was the super cute uh, cup, summer drink cup. And this one is going to be a little bit harder because it has so many different facets. These oranges are actually like three dimensional so they stick off the can you kind of see that? They kind of stick off the board. So I'm going to have to tape around those in order to paint. Uh, again, a lot of glitter. And then I think I'm going to keep the shape of the glass. It's going to stay the same, so I'll just do the outline. I think I'll do the outline in black. And then I will do the, the drink, the punch, in purple or green. Something like that, maybe. And... I, I'm not sure, but this is where I'm going. I'm definitely looking for spooky, spooky summer drink. And then maybe like, you know, black and white Beetlejuice straw going on here. So, and hopefully I can get over this wording so where it's not there and all you see is just the drink. So yeah, that's, that's my spooky summer ween right now. And I'm really amped up about it. This is the first summer that I've kind of gone hardcore into, into summer ween. So. Lots of good things brewing. Lots of glitter on my pants. Um, but that basically wraps it up. I'm sorry that this was so long. I feel like I've been rambling for a while about knitting. Uh, witchy stuff, not much going on. Uh, just doing what we do. Uh, I still gotta get our house blessing together and get that done. Because it doesn't, it's starting to feel more like a home, but I need that final piece to kind of bring it home. And then mama stuff, we're dealing with um, the kids going to the new daycare and adjusting to a new life and a new routine here at the new house. So we're just kind of rolling with that right now. It's, it's a transition that takes several weeks to get through. It's hard. There are a lot of meltdowns. There's a lot of uh, fatigue. What's it called? There's a specific type of fatigue that comes at the end of a daycare day or at the end of a school day that um, kids have a hard time coming down from that and so we're dealing with a lot of that at the end of the day and that turns into tantrums or it turns into not wanting to eat so we're having we're combating that slowly and carefully uh, trying not to to let it get out of hand too much but we do what we can so that's it for now um if you like me subscribe hit that thumbs up button i keep forgetting to say that at the end or at the beginning um Maybe this whole thing, even though we're on episode what 15. So, so hang out, subscribe, notifications if you want to. But I'll see you soon.